A distillery with a prominent past and a redefined future after the decimation of the Irish whiskey scene in the 1900s. Let's drink some whiskeys. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm Whiskey Chaser Brian, Christie's Bar. Hope you're awesome. Came to me the other night. It's been a while since I did more than one whiskey comparison on the show. And while this isn't a comparison, it's much more of a showcase, really. And the fact that I've been meaning to do this video for ages, but with the delay of the final release, I couldn't see a better time than now than to bring them on the show and have a little sup. A little of each. These are the latest and greatest from Tom and Gate Whiskey. Boom. So yeah, three whiskeys on the show today. And allow me to formally introduce you to, we'll start in the middle, the single malt cognac, the single pot still imperial stout finish, and the single malt ruby port finish. All of these are single cask and cask strength straight away. I think you know this is gonna be quality, but first viewers, a little history lesson on the brand. As I previously mentioned, the historic distillery had prominent past, opening its gates in 1818 by the River Shannon in County Limerick, Limerick City. While the majority of whiskey produced was for export on home turf, it became known as a distillery that produced whiskey of good reputation. Now, throughout its life, the distillery changed hands a number of times and went by a number of different names. You have Brown Stein and Co, Limerick Distillery Co Limited, and finally, by 1868, it was known as Archibald Walker's Limerick Distillery. However, it was always still referred to as Toman Gate Distillery. Now, I've said it a number of times, and I've mentioned this before, but there was an Excise Act of 1823. Irish whiskey production in the country really quadrupled. The operations at Tom and Gate Distillery were estimated to be producing upwards of 230,000 gallons of spirit a year, which equated to roughly 1 20th of total Irish production, which changed to 1 16th by 1827. A lot of whiskey. So by all accounts, a very sizable operation for those times in Ireland. And it is estimated at the time that Tom and Gate Distillery alone was producing 9% of the world's whiskey market. That'll just give you an idea into how big this distillery once used to be. So in 1885, Alfred Barnard, who I've mentioned before on the show, has vis uh, visited the distillery along with the other distilleries of Ireland at the time. And he described this distillery as probably the finest undertaking of its kind in the Four Kingdoms. Remarking on the six acres the distillery engulfed, which included malting and barley lofts, malting floors, kilns, mash house, mill, and how the whiskey made in this distillery is of good reputation and full bodied, and is said to possess rapidly maturing qualities. Interesting. Another interesting fact is we have a saying here in Ireland, if someone was said to be in good form or always happy, then you're as happy as Larry. Rumor has it that the saying originated in Tom and Gate Distillery as a cooper that was employed by distillery there, whose name was Larry. He was such a happy character and jovial man that he was always smiling and saluting everyone he met on his way to and from work. His name became a byword. And so we have, you're as happy as Larry. I'm as happy as Larry to be drinking this whiskey today. All right, so we're coming up on some of the hard times now in the Irish whiskey industry. So in 1902, a Scottish based company called DCL, I've mentioned them before as well, purchased the distillery as a result of a global economic and political turmoil. And now I have spoken about this a number of times on the channel, you should be well aware by now, but as this is why the Irish whiskey scene was nearly completely decimated. I mean, you know, you have the Anglo-Irish trade wars, prohibition, World War I. Things eventually got so bad that in 1919, DCL decided to completely shut down operation at Limerick's Tom and Gate Distillery. At the time, no one knew but it would be a hundred years later before Limerick Risky was once again brought back to life. Now, enter one man and his dream to bring back distilling that once put Limerick on the global Irish whiskey map. Global Irish whiskey map. Maybe just um, global whiskey production map. Or, no, that doesn't sound right either. Maybe just put uh, Limerick back on the map. Yeah, stick with that one. 
write that down. Anyway, enter Nick Ryan, a native Limerick man with big dreams, hopes, aspirations, and plans. When I think of Irish whiskey and the community of enthusiasts we have, one word really comes to mind, and that's passion. I mention this because Nick has to be one of the most passionate people in the industry. He's 100% dedicated to bringing Limerick whiskey back to the masses and has done his research. I've spoken to the man a number of times and his sheer knowledge on the history of distilling a Limerick is on par with his knowledge of producing an amazing spirit. In short, he knows his shit. Nick has single-handedly reborn this whiskey brand of what would be truly Limerick whiskey. Currently, there are a number of plans in the working that include a distillery built in Limerick by hopefully 2030 and current plans in place to bring a bonded warehouse and bottling line within the city, bringing him one step closer to his ultimate goal, a distillery. Now, when you talk to Nick, you get the idea this is a true labor of love. He has worked tirelessly the last couple of years in all aspects of the business, from sourcing amazing spirits to label and bottle designs, marketing, sales, unique purchasing opportunities, and they have a cask program. Not to mention sourcing his own barley that, he's been, that has been distilled at another Irish distillery and is currently maturing in warehouses. I would imagine he barely has time to sleep with not only the business, but with uh, family life too. He's a busy boy. So when these whiskeys became available, I immediately signed up to the website to receive a shout on the first bottling. This wasn't something I had planned on missing out on. By the way, I'm gonna leave all links to the social media for the company, as well as a link to the website where you can check out some of their offerings. They can be fairly thin on the ground, and as drinkers, uh, most people try and collect these. I have seen a number of them open, but they're generally snapped up very quickly. So I would advise that you register for the early release of the bottles if you like the brand. And also, these are all available here in Christie's should you want to try sometime. Come on down. Roll on that maturation warehouse, eh? Nick? So in the meantime, and in the lead up to Limerick Whiskey coming from a Limerick distillery, we have what is known here as Limerick Spirits Co. Uh, which it's basically the brand sourced spirits that showcase exceptional spirits and cast finishes. And we have the very first that are part of the Departed Spirits of Limerick series. Now, each one of these are a different cask finish as well as one single pot still and two single malts. Two single malts, one single pot still. I think that's plenty of info on the history of Limerick Whiskey and its uh, current revival state. So I think we should just taste the whiskey now, which is my favorite part of the show. I will break these down into three separate tastings, along with a bit of info on each, as I always tend to do anyway. Before we do though, and if you haven't already, I kindly ask that you subscribe to the channel and show the Whiskey Chaser a tiny bit of love by clicking the thumbs up icon and making certain you have the notifications turned on for when my videos launch. Look, I don't even know why I asked that. I don't know what the difference or what difference that makes, if any, to the whole subscription thing. I've seen loads of people doing it, so. I mean, if you really wanted to watch the videos, you would anyway, right? And you know by now that these videos are released every Wednesday at quarter past five, so. Choose to, or not. Everyone else asks to turn on notifications, so yeah. Let's drink. So I'm going to move this way, because it doesn't make sense in my head, this is the first release. And first up is, in this series, the Single Pot Still Whiskey, sourced from Great Northern Distillery, a non-age statement whiskey, finished in an Imperial Stout cast from Treaty City Brewery. This is a limited release of 232 bottles at cast strength, which is 58.23%, with non-chill filtration and natural color. Each bottle has been hand-filled, labeled, and adorned with a unique coin engraved with the individual bottle number. Beautiful. This is bottle number 214 out of 240. Cask PL001, bottled on the 24th of the 11th, 2020. Now, ooh, let's change a bit. Okay, so on the nose, getting a little bit of youth, but a nice hit of spice. And you'd expect that from a pot still whiskey with um, a non-age statement. You know, you're going to get lots of spice forward. Really nutty and a nice bit of earthiness to it. Uh, there's a lovely dark chocolate note in there as well. You're definitely getting that kind of stout vibe coming through from the cask. It's certainly having a bit of an impression on the whiskey. We're starting to get at the back of it now. There's a little bit of clove. There's a little bit kind of grainy towards the back. I say grainy, you could say malty. 
Um, malty would probably make sense. I always refer to it as grainy because, you know, they are grains, technically. A little bit of orchard fruits, maybe, towards the end. Mm, I don't know. I'm getting that. I think the Imperial Stout cast kind of makes it just that little bit more complex on the nose, giving you a couple, kind of different array. Let's try it. We've talked enough. Let's launch it. On the palate, lots of spice. Lots of spice. Very oily. Lovely vanilla and honey sweetness. A slight hint of the grains or the maltiness, like I, like I had said, at the nose. A little bit of that youth coming through. Um, again, non-age statement whiskeys. I believe, if I'm correct, these were laid down in 2016-ish, from what I recall. I could be wrong on that, could be 2014. I think it's 2016, but I could be wrong on both those. I didn't take the proper notes. I'm going to add a little drop of water because on the finish, you're getting that kind of spicy, grainy um, mouth coating. It's still lasting forever. Um, it's really kind of dragging out the finish. The dark chocolate notes definitely coming through a little more. Um, what's the best way to do this? I'm not making a bollocks of it. Just gonna try and open it up with a touch of water, see what happens. Don't normally, but these are quite high ABVs. Um, this one, you know, 58.23. Kind of brings out the more grainy notes in the, um, in the whiskey. Certainly dampers it down a bit. Obviously your spice is kind of gone now and I'm not getting a whole load of uh, notes from the Imperial Stout cask off it at all. Let's launch it. A little bit of honey sweetness, honey smoothness, but you're getting that grains coming through. The spice is kind of tapered off a nice bit. Um, personally, I think adding the water to that one doesn't do a whole lot for it. It's nicer at the cast strength, not being touched. You're getting way more of the Imperial Stout cask finish off of it. Uh, way more of those dark earthy notes. Not a bad whiskey, to be honest with you. I mean, for the price point, I think these were 100 euros each um, at sign up time, so at the time of purchase, I should say, when we signed up for them. So, uh, you know, you're getting a single pot still there. It is a sourced spirit uh, from Great Northern Distillery. I might add, I should have mentioned that, but all three of these are sourced from um, Great Northern. And they put that on the, on the label there somewhere. Distilled and matured at Great Northern Distillery. Kind of loud, yeah. Bottle under bond from Limerick Spirits Company. Okay, so I want to move on because this is going to take forever to edit, but next on the list, we have a single malt that's been finished in a French cognac cask. This is limited. This is a limited release of 288 bottles. Um, Gallop, Galloping Hogan is the name of this, and it's been bottled at another cast strength, 59.59% ABV. Again, non-chill filtered, all natural coloring. Each bottle hand filled, labeled, embellished with a unique coin engraving. Um, this is bottle number 23 of 300. And this was bottled the 24th of 11th, 2020. Uh, cask GH001. Okay. So on the nose, right, there's already, I kind of find a lot more going on here than um, the Imperial Stout cask, but I kind of favor the more kind of sweeter styles of casks or finished casks, I should say. Um, Straight away, I'm getting a kind of a rum raisin type nose to it, which is, you know, interesting. It is a cognac finish. Mm. Subtle orchard fruits. Um, let's see, can I dig out some of that spice? Little hints of spice, there's not a whole lot there. If I was gonna say something, it'd be kind of a white peppery spice, you know, there is that, again, touch of youthfulness to it, but, uh, it's not where you think it would, would be at. It's certainly there at the end. Uh, upon first nosing, it, that doesn't hit you at all, but definitely bit your honey, your vanilla notes, malty slash grainy is what I say. Um, I don't wanna say there's something there at the end I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe, maybe a very, very slight hint of plum at the end, just a touch. All right, let's, uh, come on, let's get a little sip in, launch it. Spice forward, vanilla, honey, orchard fruits. Um, not hugely complex, complex, but again, oiliness, 
incredible oiliness for the age of this or non even the fact that it's you know an, a non-age statement like you do have those greeny type notes here again at the finish your vanilla honey sweet um there was a lot of spice initially on the mouthfeel still there but like kind of tapering off now um no spirity notes on this just the, everything kind of tapers off quite nicely it's, I, I definitely kind of find myself, I got a lot more from the cognac cask and this one in terms of sweetness than I would have gotten from the Imperial Stout. Um, that's, you know, I think that goes without saying, but um, two different types of spirits as well. So I did add a little bit of water to this there. So just a, a very small mouthful. A lot more grainy on the nose now. You're getting your kind of malty notes coming through, biscuity notes. Little or no spice launch it heat has subsided you're getting more of the kind of orchard fruits coming through but on um, that malt biscuit nose kind of to it uh, again another one that I don't think needs watering down uh, if you were to drink a small dram of this and enjoy it kind of slowly um, this would open up beautifully or once your palate becomes accustomed to it uh, nice sweetness off it I love to see that from a cognac cask Finished whiskey, or in general, all types of whiskey. And uh, I'm a single malt man, so yes. So yeah, that is the single malt cognac cask finish. And now, last, but certainly not least, and the one I've been patiently waiting for, with um, a touch of a hold up due to some COVID issues. Uh, it's all good now, obviously, that it's, you know, that it's been released. But what we have here is the Miguel or Miguel Hogan Single Malt Ruby Port Finished Whiskey. Non-age statement again, cash strength 59.57 ABV, non-chill filter, no coloring added. Um, I don't know if you can see it from the video, but the coloring is insane here. Again, hand bottled, hand labeled. Um, this is bottle number 116 of 360. Uh, MH02 and this was bottled on the 8th of the 5th 21 so where are we June 6th uh, roughly about a month ago um, oh this is a different animal this is a different beast I'm a sucker for ruby port finishes though or port finishes in general Tennessee I find that is that if they have too much cask interaction and I only found this out recently what that means but um, if they have too much cask interaction or if they get a bit bitter I'm hoping that's not the case here but on the nose way more kind of cherry sweetness obvious cherry sweetness and now I poured those and let them air out for a minute or two obviously I sped the camera work up both so you wouldn't have to wait through it but kind of find that develops the nose a little bit more you're definitely just some marzipan on the nose here very juicy, very ripe. Um, there's not as much spice coming through as the last two. There's definitely orchard fruits at the back, kind of like a pear note, not so much an apple, but more kind of leaning on the pears. A little bit of that single malt nose coming through on it, should that be coming the maltiness, the, maybe the biscuity towards the end there. Mm, it smells lovely. It's not it. Wow. Very bright, very flavorsome. A ton of cherry sweetness. Pear from the malt. And that white pepper spice is kind of coming through. Not as spicy as the other two. Way more tame, I think. Uh, very juicy. Absolutely no bitterness. None whatsoever. Awesome. Um, you know, there's a lovely vanilla note to it too on the palate. The finish coming through now. Little more length on the finish here, almost kind of a grapey type flavor. So I'm kind of left with that on the palate. So slightly changed here in terms of, you know, complexity. Overall, I think this is lovely. Flavors really complement each other. Yeah, well done to Nick. Not bad at all. I like that one. No, I like all of them, but I, I would prefer, my preference would be towards the, uh, the Ruby port. I added a touch of water. Let's just see what happens here. Oh uh, yeah, kind of opens up the orchard fruits a little bit more and that, now that the cherry notes and that sweet vibrancy has kind of gone behind that a little bit. A little bit more malt biscuity, kind of grainy. Let's launch it. Yeah, lovely sweetness from the orchard fruits there. Even a hint of the cherry coming through. Spice, not so much. Um, grand finish. Again, this one you could add a touch of water to if you wanted to. 
kind of brings more of that malt, malt flavors that you would come to single malt flavors through that you might prefer a little bit, but it kind of dampens down the cherry knit, cherryness and the, the port, the ruby port cask influence, I think, personally. But uh, we've said this before on the channel that my palate is uh, questionable at best sometimes. Yeah, all the boys looking well for their close-ups. All right, so to sum up, while there is some slight evidence of youth here in the first two, I think, you know, this is, you can kind of expect that with cash strength whiskies like these that are really non-age statements. My favorite has to be the port finished whiskey, as I tend to lean that way in general anyway towards those ripe cherry notes. But I think, you know, there is definitely something for everyone here. If I had one that I liked the least or the one that like had the least impact it would be the, uh, the, Imperial Stout one, obviously, you know, um, but because you're comparing them here one towards another, I've had an opportunity to chance all three, uh, change all, taste all three, and I'm going for the, the Ruby Port. It's just, you know, my personal flavor of preference and the one that I favored the most. So to sum up, I think Nick did a wonderful job here in selecting a spirit that he might consider to define what Limerick Whiskey is all about. Certainly going in his own direction in terms of flavor profiles. I have to add that the designs for the bottles and the tubes here are absolutely top class. And I know Nick personally did design every aspect of these. So congrats, man. Really awesome. Really well done whiskeys. Really enjoyed that. So that's enough cast strength whiskey for me today. I'm off for a little snooze, I think. And uh, don't forget, I will leave all the links in the description box below for you to check out on your own time. Again, thanks to the lads here and Chrissy's for supplying these whiskeys to me uh, for the tasting here today. And as always, all thoughts are my own. I'm gonna leave it there at that for this week and I will talk to you all next time on Whiskey and Whiskey. Stay safe. Chaser, out. Sláinte.